Hello and welcome to the continuation of the training on practical machine learning for beginners from model building to deployment. In this video, it is time for us to you know, deploy our model. We have built a simple model, it is time to deploy it. So I have available for me within my project folder the um, PQ file, which is the random forest model of PKL. That's the PQ file that was generated at the last video. We, we were able to save the model as a PQ file. So I have the object right here in this folder. And I'm also in Visual Studio Code. You need to download this. We have discussed why this is important. I just have to go to File, then open this up. I'm going to open recent folder that I make use of. This is the folder. And this is the same project folder where I have everything that I just showed you now. When I open this, you will see my data, my notebook, my yeah, my notebook as well as my model. I will then create a new file by clicking here. I will call this API.py. All right. So here, this is where I'm going to write my you know Python code just to deploy this. It's going to be very fast. I'm going to do this one by one. First, I have to import my necessary uh, libraries that I'm going to use, which is Flask. And if you have not done that, you have to install Flask first by going to your you know terminal and type pip install Flask. All right. But let's let's start the work. So I'm going to say from Flask, from Flask, I'm going to import Flask. I'm also going to import request. We'll be making use of this shortly. Then JSONify. I'm importing JSONify because we want to convert the output to a JSON object. Also, I'm going to import Pico because it is what we use to unpickle the object we currently have. The next step for us here is to define, you know, a Flask app. How do we define the Flask app? There's this convention which is very faster and easier. You just type app equals to. Then want to what do you want to define? Flask. We are calling on that library already. Underscore twice name. Okay. So this way we have been able to define our Flask app. And the next thing is to start doing your routing and tell what you want there. So what I'm going to do next is just to import my model. Model equals to. So I need to use pico dot load open. So I'm going to open because I already have this object. And what is the name? Random forest. Random forest underscore model dot pkl that is the object and what form do i want to open it do i want to open so that i can write into it no i only want to open read binary so read binary just i want to read the object within that you know pico file right so this way we've been able to bring in our model into this solution into our code the next thing is to define a flask route which is the home directory we always start that with the at sign at you know app remember we've created an app dot route you want to create a route for that and the route i'm creating you can create several routes but i'm creating the first one which is home directory anytime you create um even a web application whenever you use a forward slash alone it shows that you are referring to the root directory which is the home directory right. and within this home directory what should happen here i want it to be that anytime you go to that home directory i'm defining a method that returns a value so I'm going to define something, call it index. My method is called index. I can call my method home. You can call it any table. Let's call it home. So this home directory. And what should happen here? It should return something. So whenever someone goes to that directory, say welcome to car pricing as a solution API. Let's call it like that. So this is where it goes. To. Right. To finalize and get these things, this app to run, we need to conclude with this expression if the name is equals to which is also main. Then it's more or less if condition, what should happen? It should run the app app.run. Let's debug to true so that we can get to know if it's not working, what the error is. So debug equals to true. Fantastic. So right now, 
I can press Ctrl S just to save the changes. We have actually built something. We built a Flask app that every time we take it to the home page, once you go to the home page, it runs and you see this. So let us test this quickly. I'm going to click on this button to run. If you have not installed the right library, you will see the instruction that you need to install this particular library. But right now, it's running my Flask, uh, my API.pi file, and I'm going to see the result shortly. Okay, great. So it's running right here on this link. And if I follow this to the web, it's going to show, but I want to use a uh, I'm going to copy or just leave it as this. I'll show you how to do this using Postman. So let's switch to Postman and test this particular um, um, URL. Right now, I'm in Postman. I'm under Untitled Request. And what I'm going to type here is either you put the URL or you just type local host. I put a full colon and the port is 5000. If I type that and enter, so you see, it's saying welcome to car pricing solution. Okay, it's car, not care. Car pricing solution API. Do you see that? It's already loading from this port. And if I come back here, it's showing that someone is accessing that same file. Um, it should be car, not okay. And if I make a change, any change now and press Ctrl S, it's detecting the change, it's updating the change and restarting that Windows API reloader. The moment it shows that okay, it's running again. Yeah, running again. If I go back to my uh, to the same postman and send, you see it will have update what I have there. Welcome to Car Pricing Solution API, and this is what people will call. Remember, the goal is at the end you can host this somewhere else, and you're going to generate a unique URL which you can easily make use of. You know, call it on your web browser anywhere. But this is only accessible on our system today. Okay, let's go back and quickly run through the code. Now that we know the app is working, we need to define another route. And this route this time around is for the prediction. So that's what I'm starting with at again, app.route. So what is my route? I'm going to, instead of just using uh, first, I'm going to put predict. So this is the route where prediction takes place. Then put a comma. Um, what is the method? We need to define a particular method that you want to use. Uh, we can use post or get, but I'm just going to use get. We have different method. Uh, get is the popular, is the most common, but you can use um, any of that. So let's define a function. Remember, we're not in a new route now. So what do you want to do here? I'm going to define a function called predict. So this is the function. Anytime you call on this predict function, you pass the necessary parameter, it should execute something. And right here, I'm going to quickly fast forward this. I just want to type the parameter. I will type the first one that I'm going to fast forward so that I can type everything. And what are we trying to do? All the variables we have in our model, we want to get them as input here. Okay, we want to declare them so that when you are calling on this predict function, supply the necessary value for these variables, then you will get the output. All right. So the first thing here is here. You know, here is a variable that we use in our model. And I'm going to use this method in, you know, in Flask, which is a request. And that was why we call on request, request God dot args dot get. So meaning you are getting parameter just like you use input to get value from uh, from Python program. So what am I requesting for here? So here, it, whatsoever you pass in there will be taken as a string. So this is the same thing I'm going to do for all other variables. So let's just fast forward it to that part now. Alright, so I'm back. I've been able to run through this quickly. These are just the variables that we use in our model. Remember, for example, here, uh, for type Dizu, I have to create them separately because in our model, we have splitted them as column. You know, we created this variable before making the prediction so that um, for type is not being passed as just for type, but we have a column for Dizu, we have column for petrol. This is just what we are doing here. Right, so now it's time to make prediction. I'm going to just create a variable called make prediction equals to all I have to do is just call on this model that we have imported. Remember, we've used pickle to unpickle it. So I'm going to type predict. I'm making a prediction here. Open bracket. And I'm going to pass all these as a list. 
and that's why i'm opening these two you know array bracket more or less array then pass all the parameters yeah present those are the variables i've created their present price so i'm going to fast forward it as well all right so i'm done typing this and this is what we have i'm just going to save it so that we we, we can save our results right here so i have saved this let us um just return so after all this return this one we need the jsonify we need to jsonify this guy so what should they return i have to put it in a bracket like this uh, sorry in a curly bracket because that's what json um, we used to represent json and say you can sell your car for you can sell your car for you can sell your car for so the value at the front is going to be make prediction so that's the outcome from that make prediction i'm going to save this and we can go back to our model to test so let's go back to the postman to test this by supplying you know all these parameters to make it easier for us to test first i need to go to here and press predict remember because i need to go to that route where it will make that prediction i just have to start putting in my key value of what are the variables and what the value but to be faster i have you know created something i will click on this book edit and paste it so these are the variables it's easier and faster so when i go back to key value you can see what that means instead of saying year and declaring the year i have the variables here i'm going to send it now right so there is an error so i'm going to check for this error within the code type object array is not json serializable okay so it's been returned as an array and it's saying okay this guy is not json serializable okay let's go here and let me just make a uh, modification output equals to let me even run sort of do a rounding on this guy make prediction run it up and i'm all right so i mean i should put just zero here it should this should be comma two um let me save now and run this all i'm just trying to do i'm going to ramp up round of what we have here you know all of them throw them to list the index by index then run them off to the nearest to less my places then let's go back and see that should have solved this challenge that we have all right awesome it's working well now you can sell your car for this value you know we've been able to wrap it up now this is how this api works and as simple as it is this is the route everything now looks a bit longer because all the parameters if you put this thing in your browser and run it which i'm going to do now within my browser i can run local host and put 5000 there of course it's going to come here but i need to paste the thing that i have i can still go back here instead of using all this uh, okay i've look at host here and press uh, enter so you can sell your car for this the price so if you are writing it even in browser you can pass all the parameters to it and it's definitely going to give you the results so why we are using local houses is because this thing is hosted on our system the moment it's hosted somewhere else um this will change but the predict and other function will continue to remain the same all right so feel free you know go ahead and you can see under less than 30 lines of code we've been able to actually build this thank you and bye for now